Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show and commented, um, liked, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, really appreciate it. Um, certainly, I know the guys from uh, the Distillers Art were quite interested to see, uh, you know, what you guys thought of, uh, of their, um, their concept. Uh, and um, so I obviously passed along, or they probably read, um, all the comments that were made and you know uh, yeah hopefully you know they'll, they'll take some of them on board and you know we'll, we'll see what happens in in due course anyway on to today's episode of the show now um as you as you know i get samples and what have you sent all of the time and sometimes i think yeah that'd be really really cool to do an episode of the show on that but um because it takes a while to sort of get, you know, either a theme together or, you know, a number of bottlings together. Um, sometimes the samples sit around for <laughs> forever and a day almost. Um, some sit around for, you know, considerable number of years, as you well know. Um, so every now and again, I think it's, you know, it's good to do a, a sort of a general roundup kind of episode of the show. And um, so this week um, I thought I would do that and I would show some some new stuff, some even incredibly new stuff, you know, that's only, I've only just received samples of, uh, and it all just kind of like fell together quite nicely. So um, the only, uh, I mean, obviously I've got um, samples of uh, uh, stuff that I've, or distilleries that I've, I've looked at in the past, apart from Lindor's Abbey, um, which is a fairly new distillery, and um, I'll be looking at their uh, aqua vitae um, which I think is quite interesting it's a sort of you know a throwback I suppose to sort of you know 17 1800s um, illicit distilling when uh, um, whiskey was practically you know well I say bottled it was probably you know straight off off the still and being rough as uh, as you know what was flavored with herbs and spices you know to basically sort of you know take your um take your, take the noticeable roughness away so um so that's going to be interesting i'm also looking at um uh the north uh the uh, the, the uh, spirit of yorkshire distillery i was about to say the north yorkshire distillery but it's the spirit of yorkshire distillery and uh in I, a new, I mean, the distillery I believe started distilling in about 2016, and and like a lot of these things, when you know the the news is announced of a new distillery being built or or production starting, you kind of go, oh yeah, and and, and then promptly forget about it because you know, nothing nothing happens, I suppose, you know. And uh, I think this was certainly one of them, and I just I remember hearing about it at the time and just completely forgot about it. And it was when I was looking for stuff for. Um, the last uh, whiskey uh, evening that I did a few um, earlier this week. Earlier this week, um, I think it was. Um, and uh, I was looking around for some interesting stuff, and uh, and just happened upon it, you know, and thought, oh, well, that would be interesting. And so, you know, uh, so I'm, as you can see, the full bottles, the, the, the from Kings Barn and the Finley Bay um, were left over from the, uh, the, the the whiskey evening. So I thought, yeah, they will be good to sort of shoehorn in and um, you know, a few other bits and pieces as well. So uh, as there's quite a fair few, back to the usual number, um, I'm not gonna waffle too much. I'm just gonna introduce the lineup. Right, okay, so we're going to kick off with the, uh, the uh, Lindor's Abbey Aqua Vitae bottled at 40%. Um, so, as I said, new make uh, Lindor's Abbey Spirit, and in it they macerate uh, spices, dried fruit, local herbs, uh, which includes Douglas fir and sweet Sicily, whatever that is, uh, lemon verbena, and cleavers. I'm not a botanist, and I probably should have looked them up, but I didn't. So um, anyway, but <laughs> they're the they're some of the. Um, botanicals that they use in that. The next bottling we'll be looking at is this one which uh, is uh, the Filey Bay second release uh, and um, interestingly enough the uh, distillery has a sort of a triple still setup so uh, two pot stills, uh, a, a wash still and a spirit still and a column still and it looks like from the picture on the side of the bottle that the column, st uh, the, the column still and the spirit still are actually joined together, i.e. there's a pipe that joins the two together. Um, 
and so although the spirit in the bottle is uh, a combination of um, pot still and column still I'm assuming that um, although I don't know for definite but I assume that it all the spirit sort of like you know goes through the uh, the wash still and then some is distilled individually in, in each of the, the, the two other stills but it looks like that they're joined together so theoretically I suppose they could actually do a triple distilled spirit without actually having to collect the spirit uh, after the, uh, the second uh, distillation in the spirit still so it looks like it could get flow straight on from that still into the column still which could be interesting um, the um, the makeup of casks is also quite, well I say interesting, uh, according to the, the blurb on the website it's one sherry cask but one assumes and an unknown number of bourbon casks so I don't know how many casks it doesn't seem to say, it just says some I think. Anyway, uh, so you know again like I said the distillery's only been going for what, four years now so it's going to be young spirit and one assumes like Kings Barn and uh, some of the other newer distilleries uh, the, the, the malt has been d designed I suppose for want of a better word to be you know bottled and approached uh, early in its uh, existence uh, talking of Kings Barn perhaps the next bottling we'll be looking at so this is what the, the brand new release this is called the Family Reserve Limited release uh, and technically it's a, just a cast strength version of their standard 46% bottling uh, it's the same cask makeup so American Oak and XSTR casks and is bottled at 59.2% uh, next bottling we're looking at is so brand new uh, that I only received it the other day, the sample of, so uh, and I don't even think it's gone on sale yet, so I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to be reviewing it, but they did the, I think they did a, a Facebook launch um, the other the other week, early in the week when I was doing the um, uh, our own uh, Zoom tasting. So this is the, well I'm assuming it's the new Seasons bottling, well they seem to have dropped the, the word Seasons, um, I don't know whether it's still part of that range or not, I, I assume so, uh, and um, I'm now going to attempt to uh, pronounce the the name of it so I'm just going to murder the name of it so bear with me Jack Tickla uh, no there's no L there Ka I'm just going to call it the Mac Myra Jack okay um, so it's bottled as usual the usual ABV of 46.1% and again it's a, it's a, a selection of, of casks uh, American Oak, Swedish Oak and ex bourbon which have all been saturated with good old Swedish berry wine. Now um, apparently from, uh, well, I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of the craft producer of the berry wine so um, you can find out the name of that uh, on the website because I'm just going to murder it because it's got lots of G's, Y's and T's and stuff in it. Anyway, um, <laughs> so those casks plus uh, ex First Fill American Oak and um, First Fill Oloroso make up the batting. So uh, another u interesting, uh, interesting sort of selection of casks, and I believe they use some of what they call their smoke tails um, in that particular batting. Um, so, well, either the smoke tails. It says smoky recipe casks, which. I assume it's either smoke tails or is there actual peated stuff. I don't honestly know. Um, just has, uh, hazarding a bit of a guess there. Um, anyway, moving on to the first of the two peated bottlings. Uh, finally, got hold of a sample of the uh, North Star Chaos, uh, batch number one. Uh, bottled at 50%. It's 10-year-old um, Kalila and it's a batting of two sherry hoggies and one bourbon hoggie. So, uh, could be interesting. And uh, the last bottling we'll be looking at, a uh, big thank you to my friend uh, in Sunderland for the sample, is the uh, Brooklady Port Charlotte uh, Digital Fez Isla bottling from uh, earlier this year. It is a uh, 16 year old, a bottle of 55.8. Uh, Spirit was uh, distilled in 2003, bottled obviously this year. Um, peated to 30 parts per million. I believe from what I read online it was blended from three different parcels. The first parcel was uh, refill hoggies recasked into first fill bourbon barrels in 2012. Uh, one parcel of first fill bourbon uh, which was recast into ex saturns in 2013 
and one parcel of a batting of ex-sherry bourbon and virgin oak. So uh, it's going to be quite, a, quite an interesting one to finish off with and as far as I'm aware I think that's the oldest age statement of uh, Port Charlotte that I've actually uh, come across so it should be really interesting. So let's kick off with uh, a bit of Lindor's Abbey then shall we? Right, okay, so let's see what the notes gives us on the sound, shall we? Certainly get the uh, lemon balm or lemon verbena. Um, it's quite full, um, lemony. Um, there's a sort of a little bit of. I'm assuming it's obviously the the, the Douglas fir, but it's sort of you know pine needles. Um, there's a bit of spice, a bit of bit of ginger, maybe a bit of pepper, possibly. Um, I mean, beneath it, the you can you can just about make out the, the spirit character it's got a, a softness as a sort of a touch of apricot it's quite fleshy um i mean it would like i said it would be been been really interesting to sort of taste the new mate but yeah well i've got this and you know it's um i think if you like your gins you know um or akavits and or things like that um i think you'll obviously enjoy this um and it's a pleasant nose. It's 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 balanced. Um, you know, the botanicals and the, the spirit character are definitely uh, definitely in in harmony, shall we say? So the parts I. Fleshy, apricotty, a touch of barley. Again, a lot of lemon. Lemon, the lemon of Benna is very noticeable. Um, quite herbal, quite sweet as well. In actual fact, um, I'm guessing that's natural sweetness rather than um, anything added to uh, to sweeten it. Um, pleasant length. Um, a little bit of dried fruit coming through on on the finish. Um, yeah, again, it's it's a pleasant uh, it's a pleasant drink. Um, uh, whether it, I think it's I don't know what the market is like for, for this kind of product. I mean, certainly it's not um, something that I get asked for an awful lot in the shop. Um, but it's not it's pleasant. I mean, I'm more interested in tasting their actual spirit, but I don't believe that's going to be ready. Will release until until next year uh, I think uh, that is the plan um, but uh, you know if that's an indicator of the of, of the quality of uh, of the of the um, uh, Lindor's Abbey then I think it's gonna be pretty damn good whiskey then uh, so this is the Filey Bay second release Youthful, high toned, grassy, plenty of barley, a little bit of white fruit, a touch of dried fruit there in the background, a touch of toasty oak. It's quite a subtle note, uh, nose. It's um, sherry fruit is slightly balsamic. Um, there's a little bit of tannin. It sort of almost reminds me of, of, an, of an STR sort of slightly whiny tannin kind of note. Um, there's a bit of butter. Um, oh, it's a nice nose. It's it's really quite pleasant. Yeah, it's a it's obviously youthful, like I said. Um, but I think that's, that's pretty appealing, actually. Let's see what the pals like. The column still is spirit is more noticeable on the palate. Has that sort of sort of column still dried fruit note, but overall it kind of comes across almost like an old school uh, lowland. You know, quite grassy, quite light. It's a little bit short. Um, I mean, there's no faintiness per se. Um, 
it's spirit character, it's barley, there's a little bit of fruit, um, it's a touch of oak, uh, a little bit of, of, of dried spice, um, I just think it needs maybe a couple more years, I don't really feel it's kind of at its um, optimum sort of point as yet, if you see what I mean. I mean, it's, it's a lovely insight, it's pleasant, it's, it's a lovely spirit, um, and like I said, it's, it's got that kind of, almost kind of old school um, lowland, although there's a little bit, there's some nice weight to it as well. Um, I just feel it's a little, a little immature and I think sort of I think I'll, I'll give it a couple more years uh, that is going to sort of develop really nicely maybe maybe a little bit more sort of uh, American oak impact maybe you know a bit more I don't know. It, it, it just seems to be like I said it's just that kind of feeling I mean it's a lovely spirit as it is but you know I think that's going to sort of like develop really really well so um, so yeah nice one Okay, so on to the King's Barn. So now I was a big, big fan of the 46% uh, bottling. I loved the sort of, you know, the soft estuary uh, uh, fruit character of the 46% uh, bottling. So let's see what the uh, cast strength version is like. Get a lot of the STR cask straight off the bat. A lot of that sort of whininess, soft tannins dried fruit, a lot of alcohol as well, the alcohol is really really noticeable, um, I mean there's some soft fruit underneath there, there's a little bit of apricot, um, touch of apple, touch of creamy oak, but it's th that, it feels quite tight um, and, and the alcohol is certainly, certainly what's making it feel like that. Um, I mean, I'm I'm hoping that a little drop of water will kind of like, you know, turn it into sort of like the 46% bottling because um, that was really impressive. Anyway, let's, let's see what the power's like. Oh, that's grippy. The alcohol, the tannin, it's really gone. Mm. Lots of whiny STR cask, and that's pretty much about it. STR cask, alcohol, a um, little bitterness on the finish, which um, is not overly intrusive, but it's it's as tight as a natch chuff, so we say. I mean, that really does need some water. So we're going to put a, a reasonable amount of water with it, just to see. Uh, if that actually does kind of hopefully open it out. Um, now, I was expecting more of the estuary fruit and what have you, but I'm not really getting a lot of that. Um, there is a little bit of white fruit, a little bit of apricot, um, but it's more barley accented, which is a surprise because I wasn't expecting that. Um, it's a little bit more, there's less American oak, a little bit more fruity wine sort of character, uh, less tannin, uh, which is pretty good. Um, first impressions, I'm not loving this as much as I love the 46% bottling, which is really unusual. I was really surprised about that. Anyway, let's see what the parts like now. Again, quite barley accented, but the fruit seems to have disappeared. Um, the cask notes have disappeared. Um, it's really young, it's short, it's it's still got some weight to it. Um, there's a little bit of almost oily marzipan kind of notes on the on the finish, but it's nowhere near as, as juicy and estuary and fruity as the 46% bottling. And, and to me, I'm really quite disappointed by this this bottling. I was expecting it to be, I was expecting so much more, and maybe that's part of the problem. 
um, when you taste something new um, and you layer a, 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 an expectation upon that particular spirit and it, and maybe it's I'm being overly picky maybe I'm being a little bit too hard on it but because you know what I previously tasted was so gorgeous this just feels really quite disappointing you know uh, and maybe that's it maybe that you know they've set the bar so high with their standard bottling um, that you know that anything less than that is going to sort of you know come across as disappointing so um, although it's not a bad whiskey by any stretch of the imagination just I, I, I'm just you know, it's, that's just me. I, I'm just disappointed overall by that. Right, okay, so let's move on to uh, the McMurray. I don't know whether you can see that, but that's 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 a really lovely colour. Uh, and I assume that, as per usual, you know, um, Angela was work, worked her magic with uh, blending these uh, these cars together. So let's see what the nose goes. Quite dusty. Um, it's some lovely soft spice, smoky. Um, obvious berry fruit. Um, there's some estuary fruit underneath this, and again, it, it's pretty harmonious. It's not um, overly whiny at all, and um, I, I really think that. Um, uh, that Angela is, uh, is just an, an absolute master at sort of blending and using these different cast types. Um, lovely chocolatey spice notes, um, chocolatey tannins, um, touch of dried fruit, a little bit of spice, a little bit of a little bit of mm, grippy tannin, almost kind of almost sort of virginy oak sort of tannins. Just, just starting to come through a little bit of dried fruit as well, which I'm assuming is is coming from the uh, the ex Oloroso casks. That's a lovely complex nose. That's really very impressive. Um, and like I said, just just absolutely spot on in the balance. Or maybe no, no, I, no, spot on. I think sort of pass on. Mm, again, that's a lovely mouthful. Very soft, fruity, sort of quite tannic, um, but dusty, chocolatey tannins to sort of kick off with. Um, again, the sort of like the, the, the berry fruits kind of come through. Um, not quite blackberry, um, maybe maybe loganberry, that kind of thing. It's a sort of hybrid kind of black red fruit kind of berry note. Um, Again, there's some some of the trademark um, estuary fruit underneath that. There's some apricot. There's some some creamy oak. Again, there's some tautness there as well, uh, which I'm guessing is coming from the first one oak, uh, first one American oak. There's a little bit of dried fruit. Again, it's really harmonious, really long, lovely spicy aftertaste. It has to be said. Um, and again, absolutely gorgeous. Um, Mm, what more can you say? I mean, that is just another stunning bottling of uh, Mac Martin. Okay, that was some peat. Uh, as, as you know, always like to finish with a little bit of peat. Although, interestingly enough, I didn't pick a peated malt for, for this month's um, you know, whiskey evening. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, these things happen, don't they? Anyway, so, uh, is this is the this is chaos uh, <laughs> perfectly sums up this episode of the show I think anyway uh, let's see what the nose gives oh that's a nice nose dense tarry treacly little bit of rose petal uh, it's kind of you know, obviously showing its youth a lot of spice a lot of tar did I mention the tar um, there's some roasted meat you know, there's some peat. Um, yeah, it's it's robust. It's 
obviously sherry influence but it's not a sherry monster um, it does seem to me that the, that the balance is pretty good um, I mean obviously I'm not getting a lot of huge amount of spirit character other than the peat shall we say but it's 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 a lovely nose it is really really pleasant um, and I suppose at the end of the day you know you can't really go wrong with Kalila um, yeah that's that's lovely yeah really meaty really meaty oh, I like that that's that's a it's a it's kind of like you know it's a butch nose um, let's see what it passes like That's a lovely progression. Opens up with more of the American oak character and then the dried fruit, almost the, the tar, the sort of tarry pea, almost kind of PX like um, wininess comes through. Um, quite smoky again, the sort of like the meaty roasted meat kind of character comes through on the finish along with the sweeter dried fruits, the spice. Um, it's quite, again. It is. It is pretty meaty. It's beefy. It's malty. It's it's full. It's rich. It's smoky. Um, it has a lovely intensity. It's got a lovely length. I mean, that is. It's a. It's a lovely balance. Again, all right. You can argue that it's not a huge amount of of spirit character apart from the peat, um, but it's a lovely mouthful. It has to be said. You know. Um, there's a little bit of salt on the finish. It's not overly coastally. I mean, and and I and I kind of like. Uh, I assume that, that these that the casks that Ian's used will probably spent more time on the mainland than they did on Isla. But uh, um, I could be wrong. Um, but that's what it comes across like. It's not the, the most coastally saltiest uh, Kalila I've ever come across. Maybe that's the sherry cask kind of blunting that, I don't know. But mm, it's a lovely meaty full and rich um, and lovely Kalila and unfortunately it's all kind of sold out now and hopefully you picked up a bottle of those of you that kind of like this sort of stuff. Um, and I imagine that uh, you know if, if uh, Ian gets the right components um, Batch two will be, you know, imminent fairly shortly, I imagine. So, mm. hey! And finally, we're on to the 16 year old uh, Port Charlotte. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's nice. That's pungent, earthy. Um, the peat is quite woody rather than um, rather than medicinal um, although there is a touch of menthol a bit of bog myrtle and again there's that sort of apricot apple um, spirit character coming through a little bit of hyacinth creamy vanilla as well a little bit of dried fruit I mean that is just an absolutely stunning nose uh, really balanced so a little bit of that almost that that Saturnsy sort of honey note on the f yeah I mean that is really nicely put together that's balanced aromatic peaty salty I mean it's I wouldn't quite say it's youthful, but it doesn't have the sort of overt maturity. Uh, it's, it's, it's. I mean, it just goes to show that Port Charlotte is obviously a spirit that is going to carry on evolving, uh, you know, for a considerable length of time. Um, I mean, it's not inconceivable that you know they could bottle this stuff at, at sort of twenty-five or thirty years of age. Uh, to be honest with you, it just seems to have that substance shall we say to it um, it's just damn good I mean I, can't, I don't know what it what it retailed for what it went out for but you know I imagine it wasn't going to be cheap 
Um, oh, that is stunningly good. Still pass on. Now the palette does show that sort of lovely mature barley character. Um, subtle sherry dried fruits of violets, um, earthy peat, a little bit of tar, bog myrtle, um, apricot, a little bit of honey. I mean that is just stunningly balanced and um, has so much character. And I don't know whether that's down to the fact that sort of, you know, Adam's been there for what, how long now? Don't, well, a long time, I think. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's kind of, maybe it's kind of like, you know, just really sort of sussed out how to sort of blend all these sort of disparate elements together. Um, I, as you know, I'm not a big fan of the classic laddie. I find that it's just, just too much of everything. Um... But this is just, just wonderfully balanced, really well put together. Um, there's a little bit of sweeter peat as well, along with the earthiness, the sort of, the, 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 the sort of woody peat. Um, there's some grippy tannins on the finish, but there's still lots of fruit. I mean, that is stunning. I mean, I would, I would love to play around with, you know, old, you know, mo or moderately aged, um, shall we say. Uh, Port Charlotte, I mean, you know, can, can you just imagine the fun you can have with all, you know, all of that kind of stuff, you know, um, you know, all I can say is Adam's got a, an enviable job, I would, I would kill for his job, but, and chances of getting it, mm, mm, absolutely zero, I think, but, you know, one can dream. <laughs> Okay, so that's some of today's episode of the show. Well, do you know, I think this has been a really interesting episode. Um, I mean, you know, lots of different characters, lots of different styles. I mean, the Aqua Vitae, I mean, I think that that obviously shows that the, the, the quality of the Lindor's Abbey spirit is just, just absolutely spot on. And I'm really looking forward to, to sort of tasting their whiskey. That's a big hint, guys. Send me samples, please. Um... The the Filey Bay, again, you know, I think that is, you know, just a, a lovely spirit. I mean, um, I think it's, I think personally it's going to need a couple more years, um, but I think it's, it shows that although it's been sort of designed as a sort of a lighter uh, kind of um, lowlandy style spirit, I think it's obviously got enough substance and character to just, just keep on aging and like I said I think interesting now a couple of years time I think that's going to sort of develop really really nicely um, the, the King's Barn I'm really disappointed with as I said I don't think it it gets up to that sort of like you know the standard bottling which is it's a surprise and it's a real shame and I know that sort of you know they'll probably you know the, the guys at the distillery will go well you don't what the hell you're talking about you're talking crap um, it's, maybe it's me, I don't know, but, you know, I still think it's certainly worth, 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 worth purchasing, and, you know, you guys make up your own mind. Um, the, the Mac Myra, I loved it. I mean, it's just another one of, uh, in a long, long line of, of, of classic, wonderfully balanced Mac Myra bottlings. I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, Angela, like I said, I think she is just an absolute master of the art of sort of blending all these different cast types together and, and um, as long as they keep sending me the samples, I will carry on reviewing. Um, the, 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 the chaos, um, <laughs> it's just a lovely bottling at the end of the day, it's just a lovely whiskey, it's a joy to drink that. And if you purchased a bottle, um, you're probably going to go, yeah, I agree with that. It's just a gorgeous whiskey. And the Port Charlotte, I mean, like I said, again, like I said, at the, during the tasting, I mean, just wonderfully balanced. All these parcels put together, I mean, you know, um, I, I would just love to play around with that kind of spirit, you know, and maybe, maybe one of these days, you never know, um, you know, I may well be, 
asked to sort of do that kind of thing, but who knows. But uh, until then, I'll just carry on um, reviewing the stuff because that's probably the, the, the most fun part of the job, it has to be said. And um, somebody has to do it, don't they? But anyway, um, so a big thank you to everybody that, that sent me the samples for the, today's episode of the show. Um, and I, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, that's that's been a, been a really interesting episode of the show. So until next week, um, good running and good afternoon. station we've had such a good time and um